Hey everyone, and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. It is the very end of May. This is, in fact, my last video that I'm making in May. So this week, I really wanted to kind of bring back something that I usually do at the beginning of the year with a little silent twist to it. You know, usually towards the end of the year when the kids are loud and crazy, I usually kind of like to roll with it, and I follow that phrase, if you can't beat them, join them. In fact, a couple weeks ago, I was just telling you about a game where students throw cheese balls in two cups across the room. So this week, I wanted to kind of bring back some silence. So I'm going to teach you how to play Order Up with a little twist. Let's go! As always, this game is a simple one that you can use in your classroom right away. And like I said at the beginning, this is a game I usually use at the beginning of the year when we're learning about numbers. So I will use this game in my um, 0 to 120 number sense unit when we're learning at the very beginning of the year. And I will also use it again when we are working on place value and ordering numbers from 1 to 120. With that game, I'll have students work in groups and they just have to work together to put the cards that they're given in order from smallest to largest. Since the title of this game is Order Up, you'll be doing the same thing in your classroom and students can either do this whole group or you can do this in small groups and kind of race each other to see who can put themselves in order first. The reason I add the silence part of the game is, I don't even know if I have to explain this, but towards the end of the year it tends to be a little loud, a little crazy. This can be a nice like five minutes of just pure silence. Students are still reviewing what they've learned, but it's also a nice break for your ears. So what you will do is, like I said, in small groups or in whole group, you can give everybody in your classroom a card. Now, I'm going to show you a few different ways that I do this. Um, you can just give them numbers between 0 and 120 or whatever you're learning. You can have it just be numerals like this, where the students will have to silently receive their card. I shuffle them all up, pass out a card to everybody, and then silently they will have to put themselves in order in your classroom, or sometimes we do this outside, especially if you're doing it whole group, and they'll see if they can put themselves in order from smallest to greatest. So like I said, we have just regular numbers. You can also do this with addition problems. I usually like to make them pretty simple that they can do in their heads. Um, that way students aren't having to use pen and paper when they're doing this since they're going to be trying to quickly do it. So 10 plus 9, they'll have to figure out the sum and put themselves in order. And also for these trickier ones, I like to do them in small groups so they're not doing so many numbers. Also, if you're working on place value, you could either have base 10 blocks, pictures of them, or you can just write six tens and two ones. If you want to get even trickier, you can mix them all up. Have different ways of showing these numbers. Students have to look at them and again, order themselves from smallest to largest or largest to smallest, you choose, but they have to do it silently. If you're doing this in small group, I like to have my students throw their hands in the air when they think they are finished so I can come and check them. They know that they are not complete until I have checked them and if they are checked, I will start a round of applause for the class. We will mix them up and play again. If something in that group is not correct, I don't tell them exactly what part is wrong. I just signal to the class that that group is in fact not complete and everyone is still in the game. Another way you can do this is with some clocks. So in first grade, I would print out some clocks or just draw them yourself that have times on them. Now in first grade, I would do to the hour or half hour, but I would always write AM or PM. And students would have to quickly look at their clock and line themselves up based on the earliest time to the latest time. Lastly, if you wanted to use some literacy skills, you could give students some sight words and they could just get their sight words, look at them and decide what order they should go in. As long as you give your students something that can go in order, whether it's numbers or ABC order like I showed you before, students can easily play this game and it'll give you a little bit of peace and quiet towards the end of the year. Now I wanted to let you know that since June is starting next week, over the next month, I think there are five weeks in June, five Sundays, I'm going to be focusing on a different outdoor game that you can put an academic twist on. So if you are at summer camp or if you are teaching summer school or if you even want to go over some of these games and review with any of your kids at home, I'm going to have some fun outdoor activities that get students moving and also practicing some academic skills. And that is how you play order up with a little silent twist. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and like I said I hope you continue to join me all summer long with some outdoor games. Make sure you are subscribed and click the bell. That way you're notified of my videos every single week. Thanks for watching. Bye. All the class. The dog is barking. We have new neighbors. They have a dog. 
My old neighbors didn't have a dog. <sighs> one more time, one more time. 